but somebody was like, get some synchronized swimmers in here. Yeah. He's an athlete. And that Legs. gave them money, right? That gave them money, and then yeah. they're also athletes. So, it's, yeah. it's, an, my, it's an interesting thing. My girlfriend in high school did synchronized swimming. It's tough. And so she eaten by a shark? No, no. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad. It was all done in a swimming pool. <laughs> I mean, well, so, so is this video, but okay. Yeah, that's true. The tornado wings them really far. <laughs> Where did you go to high school? Or did you go wait, near the water? No. Oh. <laughs> Anywhere in, in Florida is never safe. It's Florida. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. That would be that wouldn't even make front page news if a shark was in a swimming pool inside. No, no. Not Florida. I mean that's I think any any forest fire situation, helicopter scoops up the water, grabs divers, grabs sharks, <laughs> drops the drop. Could get oh. could fall out into a, a swimming pool. That's an amazing visual. There's a diver petting a shark, and then it gets picked. He gets they get picked up with the shark, oh. and then they open up the water, and it's just blood and a shark. Well, that's a great. Um, <laughs> that's a great like. Uh, what am I trying to say? The genre of film where it's just like one person trapped in. Yes, like phone booth. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's the next great shark horror. Somebody a diver trapped in a in a helicopter bucket tank with a shark. I mean, that, that could be the, the third 47 meters down, couldn't it? Like, it's 47, 47 meters, meters down. Up. Choppered. Yeah. Choppered? <laughs> that's, that's beautiful, man. That's... I see so, that movie. So when we were I'm talking about the, the credits at the start, I, I forgot, I just want to go into the, the credit order to be completely boring. And whether we think we're, we're, we're okay with it. We see actually the credits twice, the cast credits twice. First up, it's alphabetical. So you go Son, uh, Saffron Burrows, Thomas Jane, LL Cool J, uh, Jacqueline McKenzie, Michael Robert Paul, Stellan Skarsgård, Ada Turo, and Samuel Jackson. But then when they're credited again, uh, Thomas Jane is first billed, then Saffron Burrows, then Sam Jackson, then Jacqueline McKenzie, then Michael Robert Paul, Stellan Skarsgård, LL Cool J, Ada Turo, uh, Christos, the boat captain, helicopter crew, the boat kids, friend of Janice, the parrot, and the stunt guy. Are we happy with that order? Because it's kind of like order of appearance, but also almost... Star power. It kind of works. Uh, if you were to bump up LL Cool J a few places, it would work pretty perfectly, I think. Yeah. But I mean, with that, it's a perfect movie. I can't complain with it. <laughs> I mean, great. TJ is number one, right? T was TJ yeah. number one on the call sheet? Uh, he is number one in the second batch of credits. That that much is all I can tell you. So probably yes. I mean, yeah, interesting. So he was number one on the credits because he's the, he's the first main cast member we see as well. He's in the opening scene. Yeah, it's true. And then it's Saffron Burrows getting off their helicopter, or the, getting off the plane to go and speak to Sam Jackson. Then it's Sam Jackson. Ronnie Cox, uncredited. Not in the credits. <laughs> Why was he there? <laughs> we, we We did not work it out. <laughs> the riddle of the Ronnie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a shame. I just... I don't know why people still aren't talking about this. People should be obsessing over why Ronnie Cox is in this film and not credited and says nothing and doesn't do anything. He's just there. Sam Jackson rests a hand on his shoulder, and then he's not in the film anymore. <laughs> and it's Ronnie Cox from RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> Such a weird... He wanted to play golf. Yeah. <laughs> he was a big fan of Titanic. Uh, okay. Do you I think th anybody spiked the L uh, clam chowder on this set? With, like, PCP, like, happened on like Titanic? Like in Titanic. <laughs> um, uh, I, I felt like we would have heard about it if they did. Maybe maybe the crickets were there as, like, a prank. Maybe they, were, they weren't they were there before they started filming and somebody attracted them. They, they brought about a plague of crickets. That's somehow. a great point. They just unloaded a whole vat of crickets onto the set. Robert, before we get out of here, who would lead the conga line if they, this entire crew was doused with PCP? <laughs> and this cat. Of the cast, okay. Um, or crew, doesn't matter, actually. Anybody from Deep Blue Sea leads the conga line. Who's doing it? I mean, Michael Rappaport. <laughs> I, They're going to get lost. <laughs> I feel like he'd be, uh, he'd be the me of this group. We're just, like, watching from the wall, trying, hoping that the, the conga line comes nowhere near him. Uh, it would either be him or LL Cool J. I reckon Ida Tatura. She seems, like, up Whoa. for partying. She's going to be Whoa. first on that dance floor. She, like, if you character and actress in the dance in the birthday party scene, she's up dancing. She's trying to get Scoggins to dance, and he's not good at it. Uh, so I love it. 
<laughs> Ada's leading it. I like it. Yeah. I like. It. Actually, uh, Tom Jane would be the last person to join. There's no, he, no, mm-hmm. it's not, it's not his thing at all. No, they, he would just be dragging along someone's leg. To be, he'd be sliding around the dance floor. He'd be on his knees, <laughs> doing like, the, the, the kids at a wedding kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> just pushing him around. Uh I just have a funny visual of him hanging on Runny's leg when Runny's going through the conga <laughs> line, <just> dragging him. <laughs> Okay, I feel like that's okay. a good a good point to end. Uh, so, Robert, before we uh, before we get out of here, do you want to plug anything? What, what do you want? Where can people find you elsewhere online? Uh, so, I'm most prominently, if anyone wants to find me online, at, on Twitter at Zerbert Z E R B E R T. Um, to the Escape Hatch is my first neglected blog <laughs> uh, that people can uh, go and look at very old posts on. Uh, and then andmoviesforall.blogspot.com is uh, the website for the mostly defunct uh, podcast uh, that my wife and I did uh, about legal movies that Jay was on. Yes, totally. Um, man. And, um, but to the escape hatch, I realized just like the other week, a week ago, is turning 10 years old this year in May. So I think I'm, we're going to have to um, – uh, have some surprises and some new posts on there. Jay, we might okay, yeah. drag you out of to the escape hatch retirement for another yes. favorite scene Friday. <laughs> um, it may well be from Deep Lucy. Who can say? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That if works. I can pick a favorite scene, I love them all so much. But yeah, if anyone wants to find me um, where I'm most active, it's going to be Twitter. Uh, I'm mostly on there. If I do anything that I would consider halfway interesting is my World famous uh, fear of better films, where I wa- start three movies and finish the best one, and um, that's really just something I do, and sometimes put it on Twitter. So check well, that out. When when you and your wife bring back and movies for all, which I, I recommend, it's uh, yeah, it's about law films, and your wife is a lawyer, so you bring a, mm-hmm. a film perspective and a lawyer perspective to law films. You should bring it back and talk about disclosure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> Demi Moore, Michael Douglas film from 1993-94, written by Michael Crichton. It's wonderful. And it deserves your digging into it. Not only will we cover that, but we will have you on to Thank you. cover Good. it with us. <laughs> uh, I will gladly dance around trying to talk about sexual harassment on a podcast. Thank you. <laughs> uh, great. Well, listeners, you can find this podcast. Please keep continuing to find this podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Deep Blue Sea Pod, or email us deepblueseapod at gmail.com. And keep on finding it where you found this one already. Uh, it's on every podcasting platform, I think. If it's not, if you if you go somewhere podcasts are found and you can't find this one, let us know and we'll put it there. Oh, good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, please. I mean, just, there's like hundreds of them, I'm sure. Uh, but you can find more of my writing over at Life vs. Film, lifevsfilm.com, where I'm going through the 1001 movies you must see before you die and a few other prestige film lists. And the works of Michael Crichton, among others. So there is a, a really long review of Disclosure, like 1,700 words on Disclosure up on there. Uh, and then the LAM site, thelargeassmovieblogs.com, is the large association of movie blogs. If you have a movie blog or a podcast and want to join a big community of them and take part in community-based things, then come join us at largeassmovieblogs.com. Mark, where can people find more of your stuff? Yeah, you can go to Movies, Films, and Flicks, Movies, Films, and FLIX.com. Check out all my weird data posts and different reviews. Listen to the podcast. You can find that anywhere. Also, listen to Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong and watch the Versus show on Rotten Tomatoes YouTube. And you can also find that on Peacock. And then I got some fun new film theorist stuff and food theory popping up on YouTube soon. But if this, this will probably be, this is going to be released after Valentine's Day, which is February 14th. So head over to Rotten Tomatoes. Just type in Mark Hoffmeyer. Well, it should be. Yeah, Mark Hoffmeyer at Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, Check out my writing. I have a really fun data post coming out soon in the next week or two, or this past week, if you're listening to this. And I think you'll like it a lot. So head over to Rotten Tomatoes and read that. And uh, come back next week for to find out what what originally happened at the end of this film. And we've already recorded the episode. If you have any uh, interest in the career of Rennie Harlan, come back next week because we dig into it. Uh, um, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, we had a good time. Uh, yeah. So, as for this week's show, uh, thank you very much to Robert Zerby for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I've been Jay Clewitt. And I'm Mark Jaguar Hoffmeyer. That's it, sorry, I'm Jay Chum Clewitt. Thank you to, <laughs> to to Robert. Oh, what did you what did you call yourself? <laughs> Goblin. Robert Goblin that's Zerby. What gonna, that's what I'm going with. Robert Goblin Zerby. 
and and Mark, Bruce, Tiger, hey, Jaguar, yeah. Hoffman. <laughs> Jaguar, <laughs> Bruce. Jaguar, Bruce. Uh, we'll see you next week.